So this is a tutorial for M118. My name is Anna. We're going to be going over Chapter 1, Section 1, which is Sets, Partitions, and Tree Diagrams. Um, this particular section is just a quick review, if you've seen it before, or just a quick, you know, heads up on what sets are, how we make sets, and how we handle sets. Um, in mathematics language, a set is simply a container. A set holds on to stuff and um, that's about all there is to what a set is. It's relatively straightforward. It can be a little confusing. There's a lot of notation. If you're not familiar with it, it can be a little intimidating. It will be important for you to get comfortable with this though because this is the stuff that you're going to be using for the rest of the semester and so getting a good good grounding, good basics in sets are going to be really, really valuable. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and jump to what I think is the hardest recommended homework problem. This is in section 1-1, one, one, problem number 29. Um, let u be the set containing negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And s be the set containing negative 1, 0, and 1. So those are our two base sets, we know that. Also we have two constructor sets. So we've got a is a set such that a ordered pair x and y are set up so that x is contained within s and y is x squared and b is a set containing ordered pairs such that x is cont contained in u and y is equal to x squared. Now we gotta test if some stuff's true. Well the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up my handy dandy cheat sheet here that I already wrote down. So the very first thing I always do when I'm solving problems is you want to start by writing down everything you know. And so we know what U is, we know what S is, um, I've wrote those down, they gave them to us. We know the constructor for A and we know the constructor for B. So now we need to find out is A contained within B. Well the easiest thing to do, because there's not a lot of members in A and B, is to actually figure out what A and B actually are. So let's go ahead and do that. So before we even solve the problem, we're gonna say A and please forgive my nasty handwriting. We're going to zoom in a little bit and we can zoom back out afterwards. Okay, let's try that again. A is the set. And so A is the set of ordered pairs where X is contained in S. So the first thing we're going to do, and I'm going to zoom, I'm going to scroll up a little bit so maybe you can see both. So here's S. I'm going to, you know, draw a little arrow there. That's S. So S, the first thing is negative 1. So we're going to make our X, the very first X we have. Wow, I'm duplicating my parens here. Mistakes happen, right? The first thing is a negative 1. Okay? And then our Y, right over here, is X squared. So we're going to go ahead and make negative 1 squared is 1. So that's the first member of set A. Let's go ahead and finish off what set A is. The next one, x is going to be 0, because again we're pulling from s, and then 0 squared is 0, and then finally we're going to have 1 and 1 squared is 1. That is set A. So that's pretty handy. Um, let's figure out the next one we need to know, which is what set B is. So set B is constructed pretty much the same way as set A, only instead of all the members of X coming from S, we have all the members of S coming from U. So we're going to go ahead and erase this little arrow, and we're going to move it up here. How exciting is that? So the very first thing in U is negative 2. This means that negative 2 squared is 2. Let's see, the next thing is negative 1. Oh, this looks a little familiar. The next one is 1. We're just going to keep building the set like this. So the next thing is a 0. And 0 squared is 0. And the next thing is a 1, if I remember correctly. We're going to do 1, 1. And then finally, ooh, I made a mistake. Mistakes happen. It's okay. The important part is fixing them. So I got all excited and this is actually a 4, right? Negative squared, negative 2 squared, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And our final pair is 2 and 4. 
So let's zoom back out so we can see everything. So there's our set A and B, and our first question was A is A contained in B? Well, what this means is, is everything in A also found in B? So let's check this out, shall we? So we're actually going to be all pretty and we're going to use a blue. So is negative 1 and 1 found in B? Yep. Is negative 0 and 0 found in B? Yeah, it is. And is negative 1, or is 1, 1, the pair, found in B? Yes. So because all the things that are in A are also in B, this is true. So to sidestep for a quick second though, what if they had asked us, and they didn't, but let's say they did, we're going to make this one purple, what if they had asked us is, oops, is B contained in A? Well, is everything in B found in A? Well, we know some of the things are, right? Right here. But we don't have a negative 2 and a 4. And we don't have a negative, or we don't have a 2 and a 4. So, no, this is false. Okay? So, the order that these two things happen, the, the direction the C is pointing in, kind of important. Okay? So, the first one, the question is, is A contained in B? And that's true. The second one is B contained within A. So whenever you see this sideways U, C thing, just translate that to contained within. Okay? So we're going to step back out. We're going to erase this because that's not the question. We did answer number one. So let's go ahead and go back to the actual questions. What's B? B is A contained within S cross S. So A contained within S cross S. Um, S cross S, and there's tons of ways they'll say it. Your teacher might have a different way of saying it. This is just the way I've learned. Is simply saying, make an ordered pair out of everything that is in that group. And so what you're going to have is a bunch of ordered pairs. And I think you're going to find that this is going to be true. Because remember, we said that, you know, a is made up of x comma y such that x is contained with s so we know all the x's are in there and y is x squared and that's going to be the tricky part so let's actually go ahead and figure out what s um, cross s is okay so that's going to be the set and that's going to be we're the way I do it is I start at the beginning with the first value so we're going to do negative 1 comma 1 then we're going to do, I'm going to scroll over a little bit, i got big fat handwriting. Negative 1, comma 0. And negative 1, comma 1. Okay? So this is looking pretty good already, right? Uh, we know that A has a negative 1, comma 1. That should be a negative 1. Ignore me here. Um, and we have that. See, we have that here. So we'll do that in a better color, that in a bright orange. We have one here, and we have one here. Oops. Right? Negative 1, 1, it's in A, so we have that one. But we're not out of the woods yet. So what else is in S cross S? Well, we've got 0, comma, negative 1. We've got 0, comma, 0. That should be in parens. And then we've got 0, comma, 1. Well, I think you're going to find that this also, right here, wow, that is the ugliest brown I've ever chosen in my life, right here is also found within A. 0, 0 is in both. So here we go. We've, we're two, for two out of three right now. Not too bad. So let's see if we can find that final one. So we've got 1, comma, negative 1. We've got... 0, oops, get myself confused, 1 comma 0, and then we've got 1 comma 1. And remember, this is a container, so we need to close it off with our little bracket. There should always be a bracket at the beginning and end. And is that in there anywhere? Well, let's see. Is 1 comma 1 in A? Yes, 
it is. So, is A contained within the set S cross S? So, whenever you see a problem like this, you want to, you know, if you've got something complex, make it simpler. So we're gonna, we made this its own little set over here, and we figured out exactly what would be in it. And that allowed us to say that this is true. Okay, so we've got A and B done. We're like, oh, what is that? 50% done with the problem. That's pretty awesome. So let's go on to C. So this is where the problem starts getting a little more interesting. It's a little intimidating looking, but don't worry. You just got to break it down and do your best. So this one says, is B contained within? I used the wrong symbol up there. See, mistakes happen. Is B contained within S cross S? Well, we know what S cross S is, right? It's right here. We already have it. We have it, so we're going to just go ahead and make a copy of it, because I'm lazy. We're going to move that bad boy down. Okay, so ignore my little oranges. This time we're going to go with bright green, and we're going to see. Okay, we know what's in B. What is in B? We have negative 2 and 4. Well, is negative 2 in here at all? I don't see it. I see a bunch of negative 1s. I see a bunch of negative 1s and zeros and one normal 1s. I don't see a single negative 2. So that just means right away we can say that this is false. Okay? So, is B contained with an S cross S? Nope. Because the very first thing we looked at, and you don't have to keep looking, once it's not true, it's not true for everything. So the very first thing we looked at, which is this pair, negative 2, 4, didn't exist within S cross S. So that's the finishing touch on that one. So let's go ahead and check out the final question here. Shouldn't be too nasty. This is where they try to trick you, though, so you got to be careful. Is B contained within U cross U? Well, this is a new set, so we're going to have to build U cross U, because that's, that's the easiest first step, right, is to build our set. And so what is U cross U? Well, let's go down the list. We've got negative 2 comma negative 2. Ooh, I, I have a feeling we're not going to have to go very far, but let's find out. We're going to keep going with negative 2, negative 2, comma, negative 1, negative 2, comma, 0, negative 2, comma, 1, and negative 2, comma, 2. Now, I could keep going because th there's more in this set. I mean, I think... I think after making the last one, we agree that, that there's more in this set. I could go, you know, to negative 1 down here, and so on and so forth, but I don't think it's necessary, and that's one of the tricks you're going to need for this class. The tests can be a little bit long, and they're going to be a little tricky. So the first thing you want to do is if you find something and they're saying, is it true or false, and it's false, you just say, yep. So let's go back up to B and see what the very first thing in B is. And that is negative 2 and 4. And we're still on green, but we're going to change it back because, you know, I, I like colors. They make me happy. We're going to go to a nice red. Go IU. So we're looking for this. Do we find it anywhere within what we just made? I mean, these are the only things that are going to start with a negative 2, right? No matter what else we make, these are all the things that start with negative 2. And I don't see a single negative 2, comma 4. I see negative 2, comma 2, negative 2, I see negative 2, comma negative 1, I see negative 2, comma 0, negative 2, comma 1, and negative 2, comma 2, but I don't see that. So we can just say right then and there that this is false. Super exciting, right? So that is probably the hardest problem in pro in the first homework that you're going to see. Um, he may or may not, or she, 
depending on who your teacher is, may or may not give you this particular problem, but it is the recommended problem for this assignment, um, for this section. So give it a shot, try some of the other problems, and I think you'll find that you will do quite well.